Okay, I'm back. Uh, yeah, you will probably will have seen in the last video, even though that was a repeat, there was still a little bit of a problem. In order to uh, correct the problem I had beforehand, where the video was all but totally unwatchable because of the static, and thus most of my commentary getting cut off, excuse me again, still drinking Dr. Pepper, um, yeah, it was, um, looked up solutions and it was suggested to use silence detection on the microphone and apparently that was in fact the solution to completely cut out the static but I raised like the um, the like maximum uh, like minimum toler tolerance level you know like uh, to like 10 decibels from from like 5 to 10 decibels just to really make sure I would cut off all errant sound, but that actually did kind of cut uh, a little bit of my commentary out if I was just muttering under my breath or something in the last video, but still, it was definitely watchable by comparison, so I just suggested it back to 5 and hopefully that made things better. I'm sorry guys, it's like I'll never get this totally right when it comes to LP professionally. <laughs> Luckily I was never very popular and don't really intend to be. My viewers are commonly in the team, but I do appreciate the few of you who are here. Please do not misunderstand. And hopefully you do not mind the fact that some commentary got cut off because of the the high, like, minimum tolerance that, that I set it to last time. Okay. So, to the marrow experimental wing. what this is about and you know what let's go ahead and just kind of try out this flamethrower which is very hard to keep my cursor on for some reason I'll just put that there we'll worry about trying the assault rifle later I did see it in action last time on the video that I had to cut out and then start over so seemed to do the job uh, well, no, I'm at full health, so I can't use that. I guess if I come back this way, though. Get all the weapons ready here. Well, I'm just kind of keep a shoulder until I actually see an enemy. That would be wiser. Spooky. Just got to take care of whatever's down here and get the power back on. Yeah, spooky. Not the corpses, just the fact that there's nobody living around. <laughs> oh no, I just... I think it was a little insensitive of Sebastian. He's he's staring at like three people who have died horribly. Huge pools of blood around them. Well, here's four more. And what it seems that spooks him out is that it's abandoned, not the dead people. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, here's an auto kill. Which is good because it looks like an enemy just appeared on me. Or maybe it's through here in the other room. Okay, there's two places I can go here. Uh. Can I just kick it out and go ahead and attack? Guess not. Maybe it's all ultimately the same room here. Again, I just find that funny, the actual roar sound. Well, it's certainly gotten to back off, but... For being only given 99 and flamethrower fuel, hopefully it's not too uncommon.
Okay, yeah, that was the other side of it. Well, we can't even unlock the door from the other side for a quicker escape. Okay, so what's in here? Oh! Aha! That did not work. That will not work either. You know, I think I tried that last time, so let's uh, redo that. There we go. Make sure there are no enemies and call sites for the escape pod or <laughs> the escape pod. I just automatically read escape into that. The pod room. Okay, well, that was a shorter trip than I thought. thought we were going to have kind of a dungeon in and of itself. But it's pretty much just one or two rooms of enemies, that's it. I just gotta clear these guys out for Sykes. I mean, is he totally incapable of fighting just these regular enemies himself? I mean, I'm glad to do it for him, I'm just saying, does he suck that badly? I find that hard to believe considering he survived this long. I mean, as far as we know, he is one of two of, like, hundreds of Mobius operatives left alive, so... Ah! You know, I really need to stop aiming like that when they're that close, because they can just kind of duck a little bit beneath and, and kind of run into you. I've missed many a time that way. Oh, here's more. Yeah, I can finish him off with melee. There we go. I was about to say, you getting back up from that? Okay, well, how do we call Sykes now? Maybe I just go back. Or, well, yeah, I guess we have to clear it out in here since we turned the power on this door unlocked. Better call Sykes. There we go. Oh, hell no. Don't tell me he died. Okay. <laughs> I thought, like, oh, he's not answering. He got killed in the meantime. Thanks, man. Wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Are you sure this is going to work? No, but staying in here isn't going to do me any good. Anything is worth a try at this point. Okay. It's all set. When you bring Lily back here, there's a timer right here. Turn it a quarter rotation, and then you just press this button. It'll give you 60 seconds to climb into the pot. You both should be able to fit in it together. I don't know, Sykes. I got a bad feeling about this. Look at me. I know what I'm doing, okay? Maybe we should hold off on this. Help me find Lily. Maybe we can all find another way out of here. Feel good. I swear, sometimes it looks like Sebastian's eyes are like totally black, and there's no emotion in them, and then up close, you'll see he just seems to look really tired with this kind of brown. It sounds 
sound like it's dead. I really hope he doesn't get killed trying to escape. Let's go on. You honestly not know for sure? Oh, just got an achievement. Sykes out. Here. Huh. Is that a what they call a pistole? I was playing uh, Until Dawn with Lantis uh, during a recent visit to to his house in El Dorado, so and that's what one of the characters was using. I was able to shoot an infinite, pretty much an infinite number of times, even though, as far as I can tell, it looks like you can only fit two cartridges in there at one time. Twice the barrels, twice the buckshot, twice the damage. Shotgun clip capacity upgrades do not apply to this weapon. Okay, so that's the thing. No matter what, I guess you're only going to be able to shoot twice before having to reload. Hey, might be worth it, though. And I did take some damage so we can use this syringe. And another photographic slide. I would be interested in seeing what that's about. Yeah, kind of got to go with Sykes on that one. I mean, what more did he really need to do for Sebastian here. Yeah, he wants to get himself out ahead of you, but you're the one who wants to find Lily, so of course she'd be the one to stay behind. Sebastian just says he's got a bad feeling, but I don't understand what really for. That seemed like a pretty surefire method of getting out of here alive. Well, it's just me and Hoffman now. Oh, so anyway, guys. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Had to cough. Oh. Uh, I did, uh, uh, another reason why it's taken so long for me to get back on this LP since the episode 12, I believe it was, where we left off before my video got screwed up, was also that I was down at Lantis's for another visit just this past weekend, and... Yeah, uh, we did uh, Super Mario Galaxy 1. I'd actually never played it before in my life. I, you know, I never had a, never owned a Nintendo Wii. So like on Visit Before Last, uh, just like, hey, can I uh, try to make a run through Super Mario Galaxy 1? And we did, and you know, I'm definitely satisfied with the game. So I was like, just this past weekend, I was like, hey, let's do Galaxy 2. Sure enough, did. I mean, it's pretty much just the more of the first game, which, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I encourage you to have it, have uh, played, you know, if um, you actually have a Nintendo Wii and somehow never actually bothered to get that game all these years. I'm definitely like, what, 10 years behind? Okay, so we can see that new photographic slide here. Move, cat. Mobius, apparently. Oh. 
No, not like Theodora does, I'm sure. Otherwise, she wouldn't be helping you. Pretty much what happened with Theodore, right? Didn't he basically create a religion because of this thing? You know, I'm curious. This might be a hint right here. Okay, no. Um, there's no X on Sykes's picture. Just a question mark. So I guess we don't truly know if he survived, but hopefully it's a good sign, at least that it, there's not an X there. And I think uh, we saw this slide um, at the end of at the end of the twelfth episode of this LP, so I'm just gonna go back over it right quick and make sure. Yeah, this was one where uh, Sebastian was talking about how his relationship with Kidman has changed over time. <clears throat> Alright, well. Let's go see uh, Hoffman at the hotel. We'll get on our way to uh, Theodore's weird flaming tower debris. You know, right as I thought of it, uh, imagine it in my head what it looks like. Kind of reminds me of a uh, tower vaguely at the end of uh, Final Fantasy VI. I don't know. In terms of appearance, really lame Final Dungeon. I don't know why I kept it would use something like that as a stronghold, but whatever. The mechanics were good, all the bosses along the way and splitting the party up into three groups and all that. So don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining overall. <clears throat> oh yeah, this was the giant truck that Sykes had climbed up on while the enemies were trying to grab for him. I wonder if he could actually let him die and continue on with the game without... Five ...at the time where, I mean, maybe his part of the story just wasn't actually needed. Up, oh, flamethrower guy. Let's see, where was the hotel? Let's take a look at the map. Eh. Very sensitive on the directional buttons. Okay. Well, that's pretty much right at the tower, though. So is that saying that is the stronghold of Theodore I'm trying to get to? Or is that the next part of this in this chapter, which I think is named Stronghold, isn't it? Where I'm supposed to go next, which would be the hotel. I guess there's one way to find out. Okay, come on, Sebastian, run. Don't walk. Yeah, this is the hotel right here, so cool. Please do not die on the way here. Interesting. Well, here it is. What is it? The portable field space lighter. O'Neill must have been working on it before he even changed it. It creates a small area of stabilization that should keep the fire away. How small? The circumference is about as big as the safe house. Big enough to protect you. Good. How's it work? That's the tough part. It's a prototype, so it's a little temperamental. I have to operate it. Last thing you want is for it to go on the trip while you're in a wall of flight. I can't let you do that. It's too dangerous. So is staying here if you can't get inside. Because I'm sick of hiding. The only way we're going to get through this is if we work together. It's the only way to save Lily. And what if you need emergency psychoanalysis? 
gonna help you then? You know just what to say if you face me, Hoffman. Of course I do. I'm a team psychologist. That you are. You might want to keep your this. Let me know when you're ready to go. I know, but emergency psychoanalysis? Like, you're really that good. In case Theodore tries to get in my mind again, you can just Johnny on the spot. Be able to, you know, kind of just counter his attempts. This would mean literally keeping me from turning into a monster like Theodore was able to change O'Neill. That's basically what she's saying. I must say, no wonder they hired you then. Okay, well. Uh, wait, how many gun parts did I have again? 385? So let's, uh, well, no. I'm not going to be able to get the pistol going with that. I think it costs 400 to increase the attack on that next. Okay, so this was, uh... Also interesting, uh, Hoffman's journal left here. Liam's transformation was horrifying, yet fascinating. It went far beyond neuro-linguistic programming. Theodore's words did more than influence Liam. They physically transformed him. No wonder Theodore wants control over Stim. It is amplified as already formidable and influential prowess. The things he can do in here. Sebastian's personality isn't as weak as Liam's was, but he still suffers from unresolved trauma. Theodore will no doubt try to use his new abilities to break Sebastian down. I just hope that he's strong enough to resist. And yet she seems confident that she's also strong enough to help me at that time in case it ever happens. Are you ready, Sebastian? Alright, let's do this. Alright, let's do this. So yeah, after after this next little bit where Hoffman uh, escorts me through the wall of flame because I need somebody to kind of hold the that field stabilizer thing that jig, whatever she calls it. I need somebody to hold that up while I fend off the monsters. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Of course. Yeah, that's interesting. Sebastian using a flamethrower at this time. I just now realized that. And I was lucky. It's clear she has a health bar. But it seems like on a... Um... Okay, I gotta turn this down because I can't hear myself talk. You can just read Hoffman's words even if you can't hear it through the LP. Yes, I see that. I don't know. Apparently on easy mode, um, just as, you know, part of the... As part of the decrease in challenge, just going on an easier mode of difficulty, it seems like I don't have to worry about Hoffman's health at all. It's like the enemies would come for me no matter what and wouldn't and wouldn't pay any attention to her. But I imagine on her difficulty, her, she's in imminent danger. Yeah, it's like the enemy just seemingly nudged by her at, on like accident just now, and it barely even did any damage. So. But I assume on harder difficulties, they'll probably go straight for her. And I really have to do a good job of keeping her protected. Even better, all kinds of uh, items in these little Mobius cases along the way. Also, Hoffman had a set of 35 handgun bullets available in her pouch that I could borrow. Now, I was already, like, really low in the beginning, so I've pretty much taken all of it off he of her already. Good. That means he's afraid. Yeah, uh, again, Sebastian, you probably shouldn't be so sure of that. Theodore's barely even messed with you yet, honestly. Don't stop now. We're almost there. Okay, well, I'll use the shotgun since uh, some shells were in that case right there. I can pick them up after I fend off the next few monsters. Behind or in front? Where are you? Let's 
That was close. Almost there, I think. Yeah, I'm also guessing Are you regretting this yet? because this is easy mode, only because this is easy mode, only like regular enemies are showing up, those that don't have that much HP. But I'm willing to bet like on, um, I'm willing to bet like maybe on uh, the hardest difficulty, probably a flamethrower guy shows up at some point. Yo, Hoffman, whoa. But, like, move out of the way so I don't shoot you or that <laughs> contraption and get us all burnt alive. She just, like, walks calmly by it, doesn't even glance at it. Another thing you hadn't seen yet, I let my health get low the first time I went through this on the broken episode, and Hoffman was actually like, Oh my gosh, Sebastian, are you okay? Like, I was about to die. But that's where the uh, upgrade to having, like, uh, as much vitality as you can in uh, quote unquote, like, dying mode or danger mode or whatever you call it when the health shows in red and it can recover back naturally. I was actually take like five or six swings from these guys before I even got close to the end of my health bar and I was actually going to die. After I got into red, that is. So, I mean, I know being on easy mode had something to, had a little bit to do with that, but still, you know. It, you could definitely see that it helped. Uh, you okay, Huffman? Yeah, she definitely can't take hits as easily as I can. And so, like, more realistically, she actually kind of has to take a few seconds to get her wits about her after getting hit, instead of just, like, dive rolling out of the way like Leon Kennedy can instantly when he gets TNT to the face in Resident Evil 4. Just putting that in perspective. I got it. We gotta go now. Well, don't stop shooting. Almost there. <laughs> yeah, Hoffman kind of got intercepted by the quarterback there. And this is what sucks, yep. Instead of even trying to shoot the monsters off of Hoffman before the field stabilizer thing would go all the way out so that she could get up and run in after me safely. Like, I can't believe Sebastian didn't even try to shoot. He just calls out, Hoffman! And because of that, yep, she's dead too now. She didn't make it. And I gotta say, that really sucked. That really kind of... We haven't seen much of Theodore. All of this, I'm the only one left. And we know She's only the... Stop me. Only the barest of motivations, really, that Theodore has. But I kind of have a new drive to defeat him after this. To take him down. Hoffman was probably my favorite character. I really thought she was going to make it there since she had survived up to this point. And on top of that, it was just like 30 k minutes an hour ago, we lost Taurus. And then just a little bit before that, O'Neill, you know?
So, other than other than Sykes, and we don't know this for a hundred percent sure whether he got out successfully or not, out of STEM, it's just Sebastian now. Of course. Heaven forbid there be more than just one or two of the main protagonists surviving. For movies, I know in survival horror games it's a little bit different, but not all that often. It's still a bit of a trope that so few make it out alive in the end. All right, and this is where I cut off um, last time with the with the uh, episode that went bad and I had to do over. So I will catch you guys next time from this point where I think pretty much just the rest of the game, like two or three more chapters worth, is just like this final dungeon area, and we will finally meet and conf we will finally confront Theodore at the end. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Well, never mind. I thought the save point was just beyond here, but I misremembered. There's a little bit more before I can get to a save point, so I'll just stay on here for a minute. You know, I thought it was funny, Theodore, or no, Sebastian just now saying actually about Theodore, the hero saying to the villain, uh, this time, something like this time, it's going to be different. This time I'll kick your ass. That's kind of nice. We kind of have a reversal of roles there. I mean, just thinking about Super Mario Galaxy, for instance, this is what, literally the 50th time Bowser has tried the exact same thing. The same, you know, the same basic plot of kidnapping Princess Peach. And thinking he'll get Mario once and for all this time, but it's always, you know, oh, well, I guess I'll just try again. You defeated me this time, but next time, you won't be so lucky. This time I'll come up with something better. This time I'll finally have my revenge, so on and so forth. Like so many other uh, return villains that you fight multiple times, especially in RPGs. <laughs> so I thought it was interesting that this time it's like Sebastian the hero is the one saying it to Theodore the villain. Now this time, this time I'm ready. Okay, well, got enough weapon parts now to... Yeah, that's probably it for the handgun for the rest of the game. Of course. You know, I was thinking, I was thinking last time on firing rate, it seems like it'd be so little a deal, but this cheap. And I'm trying to think about it in terms of just like whatever boss fights I have remaining for the rest of the game. Um, being able to, you know, handgun is normally the kind of weapon you're going to fall back on uh, when it comes to bosses. I mean, it's generally, you know, the lowest in attack power, all that. Um, and I'm talking about overall, I mean, yeah, I know individual, like, individual shots. Of course, something like the assault rifle would be less powerful, but... So I was thinking, you know, if possible in a pinch, if I get to like where my health is low, I've run out of ammunition on all my other guns, don't have anything left to craft with, handgun's all I got left. You know, if I'm trying to outlast the boss, uh, not lose any more health because I have none left in reserve, you know, this pinch situation of just try to empty, you know, all my handgun ammo into him as fast as possible to survive, you know, give him as little a chance to hit me you know, and take away my remaining help. So, I was thinking, you know, this might actually be good. Actually raising the fire rate on that just for that purpose. I don't anticipate running into it, because again, this is easy mode, even though it's my first time. 
And I haven't died that much considering. But it'll be nice just to have. Peace of mind. Okay guys, so yeah, this was the save point, and next time we will continue on from there, we'll, we'll be back to uh, my blind reaction to the events of this game. So, thanks for watching. See ya!